Okay, so our webinar today is called Lessons from Little Giants, How Big Companies Can Be Adaptable in a World of Accelerating Change. We have two great speakers today, um, Tom O'Malley, CEO and founder of Convedit, and Maureen Canwisher, president of Momentum Business Consulting. Um, a couple of announcements. Everyone will be on mute during the webinar. We will save time at the end for questions, but as we're going through, if you have questions, feel free to submit them through the question chat window. That way you uh, won't forget your question and we'll make sure we get to them all by the end of the webinar. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded. So if you like a recording of it afterwards, I'll send out an email with a link to that recording. Um, so we're going to start with Tom. He's the CEO and founder of Convedit. Um, he's passionate about working collaboratively to help advance corporate innovation timelines. Tom has 20 years of experience in technology transformation, operational leadership, and strategic advisor experience. And before Convedit, Tom um, was Director of Insights and Strategy for both EMEA and APAC regions at Oracle, as well as being an advisor to startups and a director at Avaya. So Tom is going to start, give us an overview of Convedit and what our advisory boards. Then we're going to turn it over to Maureen for more details about a few specific use cases. With that, I'll give it to Tom. Great, thanks Linda and thanks Maureen for joining. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for coming and listening. We've got a pretty unique approach to things and I think the reason why these webinars are, uh, are so effective is, is that we're, we're trying to just talk talk to you straight and let you know how this sort of, uh, you know, this, this capability is just so needed out there and it's been lacking. You know, we're, we're a young startup in Palo Alto, now two years old, but only a year in the market and already 30 Fortune 500s are starting to adopt this methodology. So we're going to just share with that methodology. I'm going to spare you from any salesy uh, pitch today, but, uh, but I, I do want to make sure you understand the capability and then Maureen's going to talk about how this capability has been applied uh, at, at some very large companies to drive real value. So uh, the underlying uh, issue uh, that drove me into this space is the fact that companies were dying <laughs> a lot faster than, uh, than before. And it manifests very clearly when you look at the average age of the Fortune 500 down to 10 years old. Um, and, and the driver behind this is the fact that you know, companies are, uh, are facing a tremendous amount of change, both at their market level and at their competitive level. So trying to keep up with where markets are going is increasingly complicated. And, uh, and what I saw at, uh, at my prior companies is that we were having the same challenge. We'd go out and, and hire uh, third parties to help us try to identify where is the market moving uh, or where has it gone <laughs> in some cases. Uh, but also we're, we're working with external experts on different sciences and trying to understand how these sciences uh, can be leveraged, right? So how are different technologies going to help us adapt to the new market? And so, uh, but here's what I found. I was uh, hiring third party consultants. Uh, my team was not involved in that process. Uh, and then I bring back a report a quarter later and um, a quarter of my budget missing. And, and then we'd argue over the report. I thought, this is silly. Why, why aren't we collectively, as a team, internally, engaging with our target market, if that's what we're wanting to learn, or our target expertise, if it's a new technology? Why aren't we just talking to them directly? Uh, so I thought this was a pretty basic question. I started looking around the marketplace for something that could help me do that. And uh, I didn't find anything. So then I said, you know what, I'm going to go solve that problem. And that's what Convedit does is we're connecting internal teams with external teams uh, for either deep market insights or uh, technical insights. Okay. So uh, what's unique to know about uh, our methodology is that it's built on two under, sort of underpinning principles, one being lean startup and the other being design thinking. When I think about lean startup, we know that it preaches moving iteratively and quickly. And so making fast movement to the market, having these conversations very quickly while the question is still relevant. Uh, what I found in some of my uh, consulting projects I'd launched, by the time I got the report back, my question had changed. 
And, and so being able to go and source those insights quickly and also very specific. You know, what I found is every time we got a, a consulting report commission, everybody and their brother would come and, and try to pack in something else into the scope. We water down the scope to the point where uh, we, we, we weren't getting actionable insights. We were just getting maybe more market quant um, and, and lacking recommendation. So that speed and specificity are really important. From a design thinking uh, principle, when you get the right people together, how do you yield the most out of them? And that's when getting the right alchemy of the team together, which is that diversity. But also, I need the right folks from my team involved, which means inclusivity, right? So I need that diversity and inclusivity to be in balance for us to yield uh, the ROI out of the, uh, the effort. So think about this, in our approach, all right, so I talked about our methodology, but let me let me put some let me put some flesh on that. So imagine this, and you'll, you'll I'm going to demonstrate this here shortly. But imagine this: you look at a problem that you're currently having. Let's say you know I want to better understand how IoT is going to impact my industry. Um, with just that much information, we go out and source, start sourcing a team of experts to help you with that problem. Just within a few days. You're looking at applicants who have submitted answers to a screening question. Their bio, they've signed off on conflict of interest, they've signed off on NDA, and they've signed off on IP rights. Okay, so what's interesting about this is every advisory board is built to spec. So we're not saying, you know, we don't take the approach that, oh, we'll see who we have in our, in our database. We go out and source these teams because they are so specific, right? So we've helped large manufacturing companies find uh, people that influence gas turbine purchases in North Africa. Uh, we love specific challenges like that um, because it, uh, it makes the output more uh, finite, more real and more actionable. And so what we've, we've developed is uh, a science of how to find folks around the world, leveraging this big tool called the World Wide Web. <laughs> and so what we've done is we built some uh, scripts and using semantic analysis, we can go find who's talking about these subjects, who's already passionate about these subjects. And then we bring them in and give them the opportunity to sit on an exclusive board of their peers. So you see their primary interest is not, is not it's not a quid pro quo. They're not thinking, oh, I need to get, you know, we, we, we pay them an honorarium. But when you do the math, it, it doesn't make sense for the, for the pay to be their motivator. Uh, so, so, they tend to be systems thinkers. They tend to be the curious folks, the ones that are writing blogs, the ones that are advancing the thinking in whatever space. So um, what's interesting, very practical um, uh, first step, you define what it is you're trying to solve for. We start sending you experts. When that starts to feel right, meaning you got a couple experts and this is, you know, we're proving ourselves to you, you then get on the phone with someone like Maureen. So our whole engagement model is by bringing in uh, facilitators that are domain experts. And so a person like Maureen would, uh, would engage with the client on a half hour call and discuss what engagement model makes sense to solve this problem and better define the problem. And then we, uh, we document that and move to the next, next phase. So here's, here's a quote from the output, right? So when you think about when the, if, if we do use an engagement model that is a discrete project, for example, uh, we hear this from our clients. They're saying they get the same results as a consulting company, but for 10% the cost and one sixth the time. And while that's, while that cost and time saving is being emphasized here, the reason why they come back is because they realize something happened internally, uh, that their team is now using the same language around the problem. And therefore, uh, and therefore they're, uh, they're able to execute a lot faster. Um, so we have two types. I mentioned there's, there's a couple engagement models. One, think of, a, first of all, think of your team as the advisory board. How you engage them is really fit to scope. So some problems, particularly problems where we don't know what we don't know, an ongoing advisory board is very helpful. It helps detect trends and opportunities. Imagine 15 people that are very versed on a very specific problem. Like, um, I think Maureen, you're gonna be talking about ankle replacement surgery in Europe. 
um, those folks could be identifying new opportunities or new trends, new practices right, on an ongoing basis. We're also bringing in content, and I'll show you this here shortly, and they're reacting to that content, but it's like a expert vetted information feed on an ongoing basis. The other type of engagement model is a project based. So you can imagine what folks do is they identify new trends on the ongoing board, and then when something looks interesting, they launch a project board. This is 12 days end to end. Think of it as uh, a week of prep, a week of engagement, meaning online, round the clock, right? I just wanna make sure everybody's with me here. All of our engagement is online. There is no face-to-face. -face. We rarely get on phone calls. Maureen will describe uh, her interactions with, uh, with, on her projects. They typically meet an hour a day during the engagement while it's live. So th think about a week of setup, a, a five, you know, four or five calls each day during that following week, and then a couple of days later, we're pulling out the final report. And so um, this is perfect for discovering, um, exploring future scenarios, a lot of intrigue around what's gonna happen to healthcare um, and the payer and, and insurer relationships. There's, um, there's folks, um, um, I'd say 80%, 80% of our projects have something to do with, I need to define, identify the white space in my market. Where is that unmet need that my customers are looking for someone to solve? Um, and then, uh, and I'd say uh, we do a fair amount in the uh, solutioning space. So bringing together, say, a technical board. I know we've helped one gas company try to detect, uh, how do I detect gas leaks using satellite imagery and pattern recognition software? Something like that, where they don't have that expertise in-house. I got a letter from that CEO uh, saying that, that his team that was engaged in that project learned more in five days than they did in the prior 11 months on that subject. So, um, so the, uh, the project boards can be extremely powerful in accelerating knowledge of teams and also building a camaraderie or an execution attitude uh, among teams. So I, I think that's, uh, that's the last slide I wanted to show. I just wanted to take you to uh, a web page now think of this, so our engagement model with all clients is via what we call a, a corporate portal. So this is a custom portal, uh, and you can see our logo is in the upper left, but that gets replaced by yours. Uh, so imagine your company logo in the upper left, and this, this is only accessible by people in your organization. We do that by uh, validating their email. So... Um, so on, on ours, you'd have to be an at convedit, uh, dot, uh, dot com email root URL. So you can imagine here that you're coming to this page. Uh, it'll define whatever corporate agreements we have in place in the upper right. You can also contact your salesperson there. Uh, but getting started is as simple as clicking start an advisory board. Within just a couple of questions, really the top two things, the bottom ones are auto-populated. Uh, you'll tell us what you're looking to try to achieve. You know, I'm looking to know more about IoT and how it impacts my shop floor. Or I'm um, looking to better understand how smart technologies can be integrated into my packaging. Um, and then describe who should apply. And here you want to be very specific. There's my gas turbine operator, Middle East. I love that one. Uh, independent IoT experts with a smart, with a focus on smart packaging for luxury brands. Smart packaging is just a very popular subject right now. Um, and so give us, and it, it, it can be a, a multitude of them. And then with that, you're going to start seeing up here. We're going to start, um, we're going to send a page to you that looks like this. And so these are applicants that have already applied. So within, say, 48 hours, you're going to start seeing maybe 10 or 15 experts who are literally applying to come in to engage with you on this problem. What this does is it helps you think about your problem a little bit deeper. And then in the meantime, while you're getting this and you're reacting over here, so your spot is over here, you thumb up or thumb down and describe how you feel about them. That's when we're setting up a call with someone like Mo. Uh, who will be speaking here shortly, 
And then what she'll do is help you scope out your problem and think about which engagement model makes most sense. So let's go back and look at the two engagement models. There's ongoing, as we said, and project-based. Okay, in the ongoing uh, model, I think you've already got this queued up here, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So this is what an ongoing advisory board does. The experts come in and they're literally um, defining points on a specific trend, so all towards your problem. And they're discussing those points. And then as an expert, they're able to use a simple slider to map them on these two parameters, significance of impact or likelihood of impact. And all this can be customized, meaning uh, depending on your question, those may be the right axes, they may not be. What's also happening as the experts assemble and build this, this uh, roadmap essentially, right? Clearly things in the upper right would have more impact than things down here. This is evolving over time as well. And then what we're also doing is learning from the language that they're using there for what to search for on the web. So we're constantly sourcing content from the web and bringing it back here, both to the benefit of the experts, but also to the benefit of you, the owner of the, uh, of the experience. So this is, uh, this is a public version and therefore it's, um, it's not as robust as what a private one would look like, but you can see the core functionalities uh, that exist in there. And just next week, we'll be launching a third functionality. So not just priority map and media feed, but we'll have another Q&A where you'll be able to ask standing questions uh, to engage your uh, advisory board on specific challenges. Be able to upload even maybe prototypes and get feedback on a regular basis. Uh, it could be ad campaigns. It could be a range of things, depending on what the purpose of your board is. Uh, so, so that's what an ongoing advisory board looks like. Let me go take a glimpse at what a project-based one looks like. So remember, this is a week of setup, a week of online engagement. Oops, I need to be logged in as the right person. So just give me a second to adjust. Do you have that one on your... You need to log in as yourself. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was logged in as Linda trying to click on a piece of content that's... I know it. Ooh, that's <laughs> tricky. Because it's going to log me in again. <laughs> um, <coughs> let me see. I know what to do. Well, let's log it back in as you. I'm sure you have access to the IIoT on your on your dashboard as a purchased one. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So let's go browse all public engagements. And we'll just find a good public engagement to look at. Okay, so you didn't purchase that one. So all of these are uh, unique engagements where we brought together teams of experts to solve a problem. Some of these are public, like you can go see a year and a half, I guess this is maybe two years ago when Ebola was going viral for lack of a better term. Uh, we did a, a group, but we brought a group of uh, uh, epidemiologists together to talk about what hospitals should be preparing for. So sometimes we do these public ones for either public interest or for demonstration. COP21 we did uh, during the climate uh, discussions in, in uh, Paris. And we will just look at this as an example, but we brought together teams of experts. And this one in a public one we brought together, I think it was like 60 people, but usually it's just around 15 to 20. Okay, in day one, phase one, the experts are discussing. Uh, what you're seeing there is a bit of a summary, but you can see how the experts, they go way past, way past microblogging. These tend to be more, as I said before, systems thinkers. They interact a lot with each other. They bring in third party sources as well. And you can see in just a couple of days, actually this is just day one, all of this content. Now a facilitator like Mo is helping you distill that content into categories. And then the experts are voting up the most salient point in that category. Okay, and we do that, we follow that process. Uh, for three to f three or four days usually, uh, usually is typical. And then what we do is uh, towards the end, we rely more on surveys. And that helps pull together uh, insights and uh, refine the recommendations. And then finally, we'll do a report. And much like our teams, our reports are built to spec. 
So sometimes our customers are looking for just an infographic. Sometimes they want a full, uh, a full report for their CEO. Sometimes it's just an executive summary. Um, in this case, it's uh, I'd call this uh, a bit of an executive summary. It's uh, it's ten pages, not very exhaustive, but it t it talks about you know the the top points coming out of this discussion. Okay, well that's um, that's my piece. I wanted to show you those two types of uh, of engagements. I'm just going to return back to the corporate portal because I do want to make sure folks understand. And it's uh, for all the companies out there. It's your company. .com. Okay, so if you're working. Uh, at uh, Oracle, like I was, it would it would be oracle.convetit.com, and then you can validate your email. You'll come into an environment like this, and you can start an advisor board today. By the way, there's you're completely anonymous during this process. Most clients are anonymous, even in the project based ones. So anonymity is on your side. Control of who comes in is on your side, and then finally, there's no commitment. You can you can create this. We can send you the experts. You can even get on the phone and have a conversation and get your project scoped out with a person like Maureen, uh, all before committing to your project. So um, with this new capability out there, think about how that changes the way you, you solve for disruption. Okay, so I'll, I'll hand it off to uh, back to you, Linda, and then you can key up the next section. Great. Thanks, Tom. Um, just a reminder, please submit your questions via the question chat window. We'll make sure that we have time to get to them at the end. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mo and let me give her a quick introduction. And I'm also, one second, going to make sure <clears throat> that we have Mo unmuted. One second. All right, great. Mo should be un unmuted. So um, quick. I am. Great, I can hear you. So a quick introduction. Mo combines her 25 years of management experience as a consultant, marketer, speaker, facilitator, and instructor, as she provides strategic counseling to business owners, presidents, and top management of B2B companies. She has past ex positions in Fortune 100 company, um, as well as a dot-com startup, and now owns her own consulting firm. She has a wide range of experience in software, high tech, medical, healthcare, manufacturing, and professional service industries. Um, she now is uh, leading Momentum Business Consulting and has helped over 500 businesses with strategy, implementing best practices, and also growing revenue. So I'm going to turn it over to Maureen to give us a few use case examples. Go ahead, Maureen. All right, thanks, Linda. Thanks, Tom. Uh, thank you for that introduction. And what I'd like to share with you today is three separate case studies uh, for you to consider as Tom just explained to you some of the great benefits of using the Confedit system. I'm going to talk to you about real opportunities that took place in the last six months where I was fortunate enough to be a facilitator and to answer the questions that a lot of clients ask is, can you really get the experts that we need that are part of our industry to answer the very specific questions we have? And the answer is yes, and I'm going to show you a case study about that. I'm also going to talk about ROI of doing this type of work, and then I want to share with you an example of the deep understanding that is brought forth from doing one of these projects about is the example of expert reach. And what I'm going to describe is a situation with an, an international medical device company. They were seeking orthopedic surgeons to advise on a joint replacement device. So they were looking for uh, international orthopedic surgeons. Uh, Convetit was able to gather 15 surgeons representing six different countries. Uh, one of the physicians is the most renowned physician for this particular type of joint replacement procedure and uh, has done thousands of successful procedures and completes more of these replacements than anyone else in the world. So um, what the company was able to get was outstanding focus-based research, uh, allowing them to move quickly and confidently with their strategy. Uh, in just a four-day session, 
we were able to pose questions to these 15 surgeons and get their feedback on this particular device. Uh, the client made new relationships with the surgeons, people that they would not have normally been able to reach out to get to, particularly this one uh, surgeon who is undoubtedly the most leading surgeon in this area. Uh, using an older way of doing a face-to-face -face focus group, he would have never been able to participate uh, due to timing, due to the um, amount of time that takes to travel, spend the day in a focus room, and get out. By using the Convedit platform, he was able to participate on his own time. Each Convedit questions are asked on a daily basis, and we typically put three to four questions a day out to the panel of experts. They come into the platform on their time uh, schedules and usually spend about 15 minutes answering the questions twice a day, typically. Some come in much more often if they're so engaged and they want to see what their colleagues are also saying. This is also one of the side benefits that Convedit brings both to the client and to the expert panelists is that they found it great value in being able to interact with their colleagues and see what their colleagues think of this particular device in this case. And they were able to friendly debate across and ask questions so that they had a deeper understanding of what they were talking about. And as Tom mentioned when he gave you the demo of the system, the colleagues could thumb up or thumb down what they were saying. So you could see where the trends were of where there was strong agreement and where there might have been some tension between the answers. Uh, it's an incredible learning experience that the, the client themselves are totally involved in. And on a daily basis, myself as a facilitator, talks to the client for about an hour each day reviewing the learning that we took today, any key insights we have, and it gives us the ability to pivot and ask a different question or go deeper if we need to. So in addition to the uh, expert reach, we were able to ensure that the surgeons who needed to be there to answer the questions were able to, was able to do it on their time schedule, it made it very easy for them, uh, and 100% of those participants agreed to be contacted by the client and participate in a future forum. So the results were outstanding because the client was able to gain insights very quickly. They were able to have access to these minds that they wouldn't normally have access to. The experts were able to interact with each other and further identify what they really agreed upon or where there was some controversy. And that allowed us to dig in deeper until we understood the issue completely. And uh, great relationships were made for future, go, uh, for future work. So that's an example of the expert reach. The second case study I'd like to share with you is an example of ROI. And in this situation, there was a consumer products company that was seeking input from customers regarding an OTC, or over-the-counter product. Uh, the client uh, required an international adult males, females, who were all diagnosed with a certain non-life-threatening disease that were currently being treated with prescription products. So there were quite a few issues there that had to be met in order to allow uh, these people to participate in the platform. And I want to say we had probably close to 60 folks who raised their hand and said, yes, I would like to be on this. Um, and we chose 18. And we had them in less than four days. So we were able to meet all the criteria that the client needed in order to speak exactly to whom they wanted to know about these clients potentially switching from a prescription product that they may have been using for years with a lot of side effects to an OTC product uh, that was less costly and had less side effects. The result of this particular uh, focus group or advisory board was outstanding. The client saved thousands of dollars by using the Convedit platform versus an in-person focus, uh, in -person focus group. Um, the client was able to get questions that for targeted, get answers for targeted questions, uh, and they were able to make a go, no-go decision within two weeks instead of the months that it would have taken them to do this. Uh, the product launch was moved forward and allowed them to earn revenue sooner. They also got a ton of valuable information that they had not anticipated. Uh, we got information on packaging, 
we got information on how the clients actually use the product and how it would be most usable, most preferred usable for them. Uh, it allowed for them to be able to um, ask a couple of deeper questions that they were the client wasn't even thinking of because um, they were talking to such a good group of knowledgeable and totally interested experts that the questions were able to be answered succinctly, directly, with full confidence of authenticity and accuracy. And the client was able to even move deeper than we expected. Uh, again, we had the daily check-in call with, the, uh, with myself and the client. They were able to text me throughout the day and say, hey, could you ask John to go a little deeper in this question? Or this just made me think of something else. Would you add this? And so my role would be to uh, participate all day long during the time that the panelists are adding their feedback. And I can go in and I can probe and I can dig a little deeper. And we can do that on the fly with the client sort of whispering in my ear via text uh, what it is that they want to ask. Uh, the consumers totally enjoyed the experience and uh, created a sense of excitement because they were really ready to try this new product. And that gave the client uh, additional confidence and the ability to go forward and introduce this product to the market and introduce it in months in, uh, quicker than they thought they would. The third example that I'd like to share is an example of deep understanding. And we started to talk about that in the last situation, but I'd like to even give you a, a deeper one now. And uh, this one is an example of an international pharmaceutical company. And they were investigating uh, acceptance among users, very specific users, of a revolutionary treatment for a skin grafting product, specifically for severe boot burn wounds. And uh, again, Convetit answered the challenge of being able to assemble a panel of ER physicians and nurses and burn unit experts to be able to provide feedback on this product. Um, and in this example of deep understanding, again, each day uh, in the week pre preceding the actual engagement, I was able to work with the client and make sure that we had very succinct uh, answerable questions that we would pose to the panelists. But what we found during this one is that the panelists were going in a little different direction than we had anticipated. So through our daily phone call, we could pivot and we could move exactly where the client was and where the, uh, where the panelists were going with this. And it, incre it increased the knowledge and the deep understanding of that client immeasurably. In fact, the impact uh, of that call and the ability to be able to uh, pivot with those clients and not only get the questions answered that we in hoped for, but also to get an even deeper understanding and more knowledge about the real issues that these users, these ER physicians and burn wound experts were experiencing, uh, came back to us as part of the best part of the daily call with that facilitator to be able to review what we learned that day uh, through the insights and then make changes as we needed to and flow exactly with those clients and with the participants to be able to um, just get all that meaty information out and be able to make it into usable and uh, immediately actionable information for the client. So with both the clients staff being able to be involved, and I think with this one, there were six or seven that would come in and out. Um, silently, uh, the panelists had no idea who they were because, as Tom mentioned, we can offer anonymity with the, uh, the client who was offering this. Um, they were able to see what was going on, and each using their own area of expertise were able to dig in and understand what it is that they really need to know so that they can make this actionable. Uh, they were able to refine their questions collaboratively, which was terrific and something that they internally were not really able to do. But using this platform and having myself as a facilitator be able to help them through this, they were able to nail it in four days. Uh, at the end, uh, the client received a detailed, understandable, and action, actionable report, um, and it was used to outline their product development needs. And again, instead of taking months to be able to develop this, they were able to do it in days and have a much richer report than they would have had they used their normal um, plan of action to go about that. 
Another thing that they found is a really great uh, benefit of using the system was they were able to link in with these panelists and review the panelists' background and then be able to start to create a community um, that they could lean on for future connections. So not only were they able to get the information that they needed for that particular uh, instance, but they're also able to create relationships that they can utilize going forward. So with that, those are the three examples that I wanted to share with you of uh, engagements that I've had the pleasure of working on with Convetit and these three clients who uh, each of them found um, incredible ROI, the ability to create, gain deep understanding uh, on the topics that they were interested in learning about as well as being able to have the experts they needed to provide that information. So Linda, back to you. Thanks so much, Mo. Really appreciate those examples. Um, so we have a few minutes for Q&A right now. And uh, please feel free to submit your questions via the question chat window. We have a couple of questions coming in already. Um, some of them will may have Tom address and some will have Mo address. And so the first one is for Tom. Um, this is a question that came in that, about our business model. Um, just if you can give a little bit more details about it. As far as um, they could see, um, they explained our business as far as we're sell or rent the platform to companies. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that? Like what's, what are we actually, uh, our business model there? With the uh, street sweeper going right outside, yeah. <laughs> this too shall pass. Uh, yeah, so our business model is, uh, it's a marketplace model. Uh, Maureen does not work uh, for Convetted, uh, much like uh, the other 120 uh, facilitators. What we try to do there is match domain expertise. So uh, we couldn't possibly carry a bench, to use a consulting term, uh, with all the right expertise. So we use a, um, a model where we're uh, connecting experts, uh, of course, uh, from the web with our facilitators, which are from our community, and then with the clients. Uh, and so the clients are paying for those experiences. You could think of uh, the ongoing advisory board being a $5,000 a month subscription and the project-based uh, four-day design thinking session fully moderated, finished report in the end, being a $50,000 purchase. There is uh, opportunities, or, well, we have clients that, um, that combine those and pre-purchase and achieve discounts. Um, what's popular right now is uh, we have, say, uh, vice presidents buying these for their team. Uh, and they use the corporate portal to then see what their team is innovating on. So you can imagine if I had 10 managers on my team, I might get, say, five of them uh, advisory boards, ongoing advisory boards. So I can see that they're looking for disruption or following and tracking where the customers are going. And then I might equip them with, say, two projects a year each. So you can imagine that's a list price of $160,000 for, uh, for that team member. Um, but of course, we're able to discount those because of pre-purchase and by the quantity of them that they buy. So I hope that I hope that answers uh, answers the question. Great, thanks, Tom. That was a question from Alan. So Alan, feel free to ask another question if you'd like more detailed follow up. Um, another question around getting an advisory board started. What is the commitment there? And for the ongoing advisory board. Um, you mentioned the cost a little bit, but you know, at what point am I committed? You know, I have a, I'm interested in trying it out. Yeah. So anybody can go to their corporate portal. If for some reason there isn't a corporate portal up, meaning you're typing your company name dot convet it dot com, uh, just contact us. Let us know that you'd like a corporate portal, and it's like a five minute thing. We'll launch one for you. We'll send you that link. You can go in, click that big blue button, the one that says start an advisory board. No commitment whatsoever. We start sending you experts. Uh, when you start liking a few of them or even disliking a few, that's triggered us that you're now considering. And so that what we'll try to do is schedule a meeting for you and your facilitator to talk about what sort of expert, you know, how to fine tune the search, but also what is it that we're trying to solve for and which engagement model makes most sense. 
Um, so it's only up until after that call that you're committing to your project. So feel free to try us out. Feel free to think about it out loud with your facilitator on the line and, uh, and no commitment unless we actually launch it. Great. Um, and, and I think you touched on this briefly before, but can you t sell or say again, how do you get your experts? Uh, right. So, so imagine, uh, imagine this, that uh, folks today, people that are sort of passionate about their job, there's so many ways that they interact on the web. Uh, LinkedIn, Quora, they write a blog, they've written their white paper, they're speakers at conferences. And it's all these sources where uh, those professionals tend to also list their email. And so what we do is when we have a challenge, we use the semantic web. So we search semantically across the web to see who's talking about that subject and who's already deemed a thought leader in that space. And then how do we find their contact information? And so we're identifying them and we're, at, we're, we're forwarding them an opportunity and saying, hey, there's 15 seats on this exclusive panel and you seem to be a really strong fit for it. Could we get you to come in and participate? You're going to learn just as much, maybe more than what you contribute. And uh, we'll also be paying you an honorarium. Um, when they opt to come in, they're filling out a screening question and they're also signing off on NDA. They're signing off on a um, IP rights uh, contract. And they're also NDA, IP rights, and um, conflict of interest. If there's, we're screen, our team is screening them for any conflict of interest. So, um, so it's only then do they make it onto the short list. I think what's remarkable about what we've learned and what we've been able to achieve is that we can assemble full teams of experts. We do that process uh, with say 20 a day. So within 24 hours, you'll be looking at, um, you know, a score of applicants to no matter what your challenge is. Great. And this is a question for Maureen. Um, you're, you're not specifically employed by Convedit, but can you tell me more, what do you get out of um, facilitating an engagement with Convedit? Sure, uh, no, I'm not, I'm a contractor, if you will, but uh, as you know, I have my own consulting company and I've been facilitating and helping companies learn about their markets uh, through research and strategic planning and then being able to leverage that to create their marketing and their uh, business, go-to business and business development strategies. So for me, this is allowing me to be able to work with clients that um, I wouldn't normally have access to and using the skills and the deep industry knowledge that I do to be able to uh, challenge these customers, provide them advice, tell them best practices and be able to do this in addition to the work I already do with all the clients I have. So it's allowed me to have a, a bigger book of business and it's incredibly satisfying uh, to be able to see these companies go from a question stage and 10 days later to an answer stage. Great, thanks Mo. Um, mm -hmm. well, we are going to end a little bit early. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in, but I just want to end with, if you'd like to start an advisory board, you can log in to your corporate portal or you can just go to confedit.com slash start. You can read more information there about advisory boards, get more details. You can also start um, your advisory board directly from there. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'll send a follow-up email with contact information and you can, you know, respond to that email with any questions that you have um, about advisory boards or what we do. And it'll also have a link to the recording. So thanks again. I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thanks to Tom and Maureen for um, contributing thank and, you, and speech, speaking as well. Thanks, thank Tom. You. Thanks, Maureen, and, and have You're a welcome. Everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.